Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Are you in what is Bahamas? What is what is this Bali, place? Bali. Bali, Bali. Oh, it's the it's a Moana Beach. Ah, Actually, Moana Beach. Okay. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm Omar Hernandez Peña. I'm Mexican. I born and raised in Mexico. Um, where do we start? Well, I always wanted to do animation. Uh, I had like this obsession with to the animation back in the day. Um, not gonna say my age, but I'm pretty old. So I've been like through lots of years of animation and I've seen um, how computer graphics became a thing before actually being a thing. We, it, it was new for all of us kids back then. Um, but I always wanted to do animation. I ended up doing this job is CG animation. As I said, I wanted to do animation like my whole childhood. And I used to spend lots of hours just watching television, trying to get what was that, uh, how it was made, because why is it moving? Why I'm feeling this just because of uh, some drawings. And uh, as a kid, I tried to mimic, but I didn't have any technique. I didn't have any previous knowledge. So I, I didn't really know. Uh, I grew older and by the age of 11, I started doing some claymation uh, tests in Acapulco, but Acapulco is super hot. So the claymation tests, I, I would give a, a pose just to a, a little doll and the doll would start melting. It was super hot. It wasn't a very good idea, but at least I was, I started doing something towards what I wanted to, to, to do animation. Uh, years passed, I went to, to um, college, to university. And there I had to, I was very lucky to be in a specific college where they had the first um, dedicated room for CG graphics. Uh, it was a room with uh, like 10 silicon graphics uh, computers. And we had, um, back then was studio tools and then power animator. It was like the first software that I, I saw we could do CG animation with. And I started learning, reading the books. Uh, and I was like on my own because nobody was interested in that. In Mexico back in the day it was 1995, 1996, something like that. And then, and then uh, Toy Story came out and then CG animation became a thing. And of course we had Jurassic Park and some other movies, but a full feature just with CG animation was Toy Story. And then it became a thing and it was like, I want to do that. I, I, that's, that's the thing I want to do. But uh, I mean, we were all starting back then. We didn't have that much internet. We didn't have tutorials or like pages dedicated for uh, to CG. It was like hard just to understand how to do stuff. Even though we had the software, we didn't have that much documentation. So it took a while to start doing things and understanding just the, just the concepts, just to know what a, an alpha channel was, what rig was, what uh, skinning and like some other terms and technical stuff. But uh, I just kept learning uh, on my own time. It wasn't very good for my college degree. Uh, I wasn't doing great uh, grades and I wasn't a good student, but I was, I was I really focused on learning uh, CG animation, CG techniques. So years went by, we got this first uh, version of Maya. And then I, I opened the package, I installed the software and all these computers because at the same time I was working for the school and uh, mm -hmm. my job was uh, to take care of that specific silicon graphics uh, room. So I was I, I'm yeah, I'm the one for the job. And so I started learning Maya with version one. I read all those silver uh, <clears throat> books. It was great. And uh, we could see some textures in the monitor. It was awesome. We were like, it was unbelievable <laughs> just to see textures in the viewport. It's crazy times. And, um, and then I thought, okay, I already know this much information. I, I know I'm not an expert, but I want to do this. So by the year 2000, 
there was an um, animation contest in Mexico. So it was like the first animation contest I was aware of. <clears throat> and it was for all Latin America. I was like, okay, I'm going to participate with a short film. I didn't know anything about writing <laughs> a script, doing a storyboard, <laughs> um, not even rigging. I, yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to have a short film. I'm going to have four characters and I'm going to, I have no idea. I had no idea. And uh, it, I think it was back in February or March. I think I, I like to say March. And the uh, deadline was <clears throat> like mid-May, something like that. So I say, um, yeah, a good month and a half is going to be enough. I, <laughs> so I started working on that short film. I realized that it was harder than I thought. <clears throat> I said, okay, I'm not going to have four characters. I'm going to have just one character. And it's going to be a monologue. That's it. Okay. And uh, uh, it took me one night to write the story, have the storyboard, uh, done, and I mean, back then I was like uh, my budget was nothing. I had like a, nothing. I was asking my friends like, hey, "Can you do the voice of the character? Can you? What do you think about this?" And they were like, eh, "What is this? That's gonna be an animation. I'm gonna have a character. It's gonna be great. I, yeah, I, yeah I, I guess it's good." That was it. So uh, I did it with my friends. And now that short film is, this year is gonna be uh, 21 years old. Uh, I got into the contest, I finished on time. It was my first deadline. And uh, the first time I really felt uh, crunch time and overtime, yeah, all yeah. that kind of Probably stuff. A month and a half for that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. I had to change my schedule for everything, uh, sleeping schedule and eating schedule. But uh, uh, we finished the short film. It was presented. I didn't win uh, first prize, but I got third prize. Wow. Uh, so I thought, well, I mean, as a student in a contest for all Latin America, it wasn't bad. I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, I think I'm in the right path. I'm gonna keep doing this. Uh, by the year 2002, I got my first job. Uh, I already. I had done like a couple of commercials before my first job. On your, so on your own or for someone like a uh, freelancer? It was, yeah, as a, as a freelancer. Okay, okay. It was pretty much uh, friends of mine that were already working, doing some commercials, like mm. uh, live action commercials, and they needed something, some little animation of some product. I did a couple of those. I, re I remember the, f the feeling of... Uh, <clears throat> that feeling of seeing your work in, on, on television. I mean, back then it was like a huge thing. And uh, I didn't even uh, see it. Like on my own, it was a friend of mine that saw the commercial. He gave me a call and went, oh, yeah, I saw your animation. <laughs> we were like, ah, oh, yes, right. Remember <clears throat> screaming very excited. And I, I really liked that adrenaline that rush the excitement yeah. of of senior work i said okay i'm doing this so i got this job 2002 um we started doing some animations and the company was uh, at the same time we were selling the software so we were the 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 company that was uh, uh promoting and distributing maya in latin america so we got the 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 most recent versions we got them first mm. and we had to try them and see the new features and how to work because at some point we were going to give support to other companies but at the same time we wanted we wanted to do production so i was like in the middle uh, trying to learn the software or the, the new versions as soon as possible to give support and at the same time actually do stuff because the clients at some point were going to have problems and so i could be able to to help them so for me, it was great because in my head, it was like, okay, I'm getting the most recent version of everything. So I'm going to learn a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to be able to do whatever I want, uh, CG animation wise. And that was my idea. Um, by uh, the next year, 2003, we noticed that 
there was not that much uh, artists in Mexico or Latin America. So okay, okay, we're selling the software. We need we need customers. Yeah, we need people yeah. that actually want to use the software and actually actually knows how to use the software. So um, we said, okay, we need a school. So we started a uh, school. It was uh, Eunoia School back then in 2003, and I think it was the a first of, of its kind because we didn't know any other school for CG, uh, for computer graphics, for CG animation. And for animation, like in general, uh, I mean, after that, other schools came up and and, and mm -hmm. uh, now we have a market for that before it was nothing. And then I became an instructor for the school. So I was doing I was kind of selling the software and doing production and teaching. Yeah, so like, I was like overseeing you know, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The complete pipeline was done by you. Like I, I give you the software, I teach you how to use it, and then we use it together. Like <laughs> Yeah, which is I mean it was it was a great thing to be able to do that back then, but at the same time it wasn't that great. I mean the feature I I d I don't regret it, but I I I think I I, uh, I needed something different, but we didn't know. I mean, it was like all discovering back then. Uh, everything was new to everybody in the team, and it was like pretty small team. But anyway, I spent like ten years in that company, uh, teaching, doing production, commercials, uh, little things here and there for some movies in Mexico, and. Um, uh, I think it was year 2010, no, 2000, yeah, 2010, 2011, there was this opportunity to go to Miami mm. to kind of uh, keep doing what we were doing in Mexico, but in Miami. Mm. So I said, um, okay, Mexico, Miami, okay, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I started doing pretty much the same thing uh, as an instructor. And we were already uh, doing some online teaching when we were in Mexico, but the 2007, I think we started. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was fairly new. I mean, we didn't have that much videos on YouTube and we were using online platforms and uh, we were encoding our classes with, with Flash, I remember it was like, heavy files and anyway we were we were learning and and trying to get ahead yeah um so we uh i was already married we moved to miami i started working there um being there it was like uh the good part of the experience was that i could see how the industry how different was the industry was compared to mexico and it was a very local industry in miami but the way it worked, it was different. Um, uh, for example, in Mexico, um, you, as an artist, you're expected to know everything, like the whole pipeline. You, you're a CG artist and you know how to model, how to texture, and how to uh, rig and animate and effects, and you know everything. Probably you're not the best at everything, but you know everything. And that's kind of expected in, in Mexico, and I think it's uh, all Latin America, but in the US, um, you're more specialized and it's expected that you're specialized, it's expected that you don't know everything, but you're like very good at modeling, but it's okay if you don't know any animation and that's mm -hmm. fine. But, uh, but I, couldn't, I couldn't see myself like specialized on something and I was like, but I'm not specialized. I, I, I know the whole thing. I can I can do the whole thing. I found another job in Miami. I spent a little bit over four years, Lava Studio. And in Lava Studio, uh, it was a, a, a very small company, like a, a boutique uh, animation production company. But the cool thing is that we were doing Sometimes the whole thing, I mean, the whole commercial or the whole project, we would okay. write and storyboard and design. And so I could do everything from, from the start to finish. And I, I could even see the production side of things 
which I, I didn't have an experience, uh, previous experience uh, until I was in Lava Studio. So, um, which was cool because it was very, uh, we were like six people doing everything. So at some point, uh, wow. just starting the, the project, somebody would have an idea and say, okay, why, why don't we do this? And then the character jumps here and then we could actually say something about the project very early in, mm -hmm. in the production. Yeah. And uh, and at the same time, you can you can like already see in the future. Okay, I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna model this this way. Uh, I remember seeing this 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 technique. I can use it for this and this and this and the effect. And the other guys uh, were like very good at compositing. One was very good at using the Cinema 4D. So we could combine like uh, all our skills, and that that was really cool. So I spent four years doing that and we were doing commercials and a lot of motion graphics for baseball. Mm. Oh, baseball. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, I wasn't really, um, I didn't know that much of baseball and it was cool. I mean, it's like entering a, a whole new universe of terms and players. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was great. I, I learned a lot. And uh, I would even, uh, we met some players and it was cool. I mean, if you like baseball, it was like a dream job. Yeah. You know? In Italy, we don't, we don't even yeah. play we don't or play. know baseball at all. Uh -huh. But it seems quite, quite cool in, in, uh, in America. It's like United yeah. States, they like uh, crazy for I did, baseball. So I didn't like, know it was that big. It was huge. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but at some point I was like, I am, I still need something. I mean, it's cool motion for graphics, but I, I really like uh, CG animation. I really like, uh, character animation. And, um, all of a sudden I, I set this goal. I want to do character animation. I, at least I'm, I'm going to work in the industry for, uh, feature animation. And, uh, the, I'll say all the paperwork for, uh, migration processes in, in the US being Mexican, it was like super tedious every year work permits and uh, all that stuff. I, I kind of got tired of it. Yeah. And uh, so we took the decision to, it was either doing it again that year. I'm talking about 2017. So okay. we said, okay, we're going to spend the same amount of energy, money, and time on just doing the papers again for work permit and all the stuff for the US, or we spend the same amount of uh, time, energy, and money to uh, move to Canada. Yeah. And we took the decision, okay, if I find, if I can land a job, let's move to Canada. So I started... Um, actually uh, doing a little demo because I didn't have one. Everything from, uh, yeah, before this, everything was like, oh yeah, you're, you're the guy that knows how to do stuff. Yeah, come on, that was it. <laughs> and, and I mean, later you have to prove yourself in, in the job that you can actually do the things that you say you yeah, do. Um, but this time it's like, okay, it's the industry, it's the film industry. It's a lot of people that want to go to the film industry. You have to show the things you're the most proud of and actually prove that you can, you can do that, mm -hmm. uh, in, in time and manner. So, um, so like, what I'm going to show and first thing I thought, okay, animation. And then it was like, okay, I, I don't have that much animation. Everything I've done, it's mostly motion graphics. Okay. W what part of motion graphics I can show that it doesn't show that I only use cinema 4d or after effects, for example. I can do something else. And I, uh, I had this, um, uh, BF, like it was more like a BFX reel within a motion graphics reel, but okay. That's, that's the best thing I have. have. And okay. I'm going to look for a job. What is it going to be? So I started looking all, um, on the positions and it was, uh, animator. I'm like, I mean, it's fine. I like animation, but am I an animator? I, I know how to do everything. Uh, modeler. 
I know I'm gonna be sitting all day modeling. I'm gonna be tired now. Uh, I don't think I'm. A, I don't think I'm a great modeler anyway, or that fast. So I'm, I'm gonna pass. So rigging, I don't know that much of Python, but I can do stuff. But um, yeah. it was it was really hard to find uh, uh, a position that I would feel it was it would reflect what I I. I that I could actually use home, all the skills I have. Mm -hmm. And then I found this uh, position was for TechAnim. And I was like, TechAnim, I, I wasn't really familiar with uh, the term. So TechAnim is basically, it's a pass after animation where you actually move everything that moves within the character that it's not the character itself. So okay. basically, uh, if you have a character running and is wearing a, a hoodie, for example, Mm -hmm. Then TechAnim is gonna take care of the hoodie moving on top of the character, mm, okay. and if it has hair, then we do the hair movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the rig wasn't that great, and we have some geometry intersections, then we fix those. So I'm like, okay, TechAnim is gonna be a little bit of simulation, a little bit of sculpting, a little bit of rigging. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. In order to have. Uh, a final, let's say, a, a final pass from CG that looks good, but at least look good enough to go to lighting. So I say, okay, I think that's, I think that's uh, something I can uh, focus on and be specialized in. And so I applied to different companies for mm -hmm. that role. I applied a lot. I would say, <laughs> like, how much? <laughs> how many applications? Uh, at least uh, 20, 20 uh, studios okay. for almost the same, uh, on the same position. Um, most of them didn't answer. And it was a, it was a little disappointing. I was like, okay, um, probably it's not the, the best idea to move to Canada. <laughs> and I was looking in Toronto, I was looking in Vancouver, I was looking in Montreal. I, I, uh, in my mind, it was going to be Vancouver. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah but it didn't happen so i i think i started doing it in november and by i got a call by end of february okay so, so it was like man, december january oh on there that's four months okay yep. so i was like but I, I was like okay i'm gonna get a call i'm gonna get a call i'm gonna i, I was like trying to be as positive as possible and uh, the thing is, uh, we had like this time, like this deadline to even have uh, for e uh, whether have a job yep. or do all the paperwork for the US work permit again. And we were like, like super close to the deadline. I'm like, okay, it's not gonna happen. Probably not this year. <clears throat> and then I got a call from MPC, from MPC Film. And so uh, we want to schedule an interview. I was like, yes, I got an interview. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I felt like, okay, I better not screw up this this uh, this interview. Uh, better be good. And um, so, <laughs> so we scheduled the interview. I remember I was uh, I was working, and I forgot about the interview. Ooh. And I got the call, and I was like, "What was this?" Um, and I just kept working. Um, after the the like, I would say an hour, I was, "Oh, the interview! Oh no, the interview!" And then I sent a bunch of emails. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was I was like really busy. I, I didn't notice. Uh, what are we gonna What are we gonna do? And the thing is, uh, I got an answer and say, "Oh, don't worry. I was calling to tell you that." Uh, we're, we're moving the, the interview to a different a different day. So, <laughs> oh my god! I felt I, okay. Yeah. I was okay. Okay. I better not screw this up again. Uh, <laughs> so I got. I think it was two two days later. I got the call. I answered the phone. I had an interview, and uh, I was I was I was so nervous, and. Uh, the person that uh, did the interview, he had like a very thick French accent. 
and I was like really trying to pay attention to what he was saying and but I was I was listening French in my mind was French and like no no it's it's English but but anyway the interview went well uh Good. yeah later that like he was like like my boss he was the head of the department um and I got a job so after that there was a, a little negotiation uh, we had an agreement and okay I had a date so from there I was supposed to start uh, in July of 2018 so I had some good yeah. months to prepare and paperwork and it, all the stuff and, and that was it I we moved to Canada by uh, by then I already had two kids you know, we all moved to to Canada with as much things as we as we could um and uh, yeah landed a, a, a tech anime artist role in NPC film Montreal and I started in 2018 and I've been working here since and that's that's how I landed my my first first a job at the industry uh from there uh three months later well you have a there's a period where you either stay or not stay in the yeah, company yeah, yeah, yeah. in many other companies so after three months i became key artist just like a, a mid-level artist mm. and from there after well eight or nine months i became a lead wow and so I was like, okay, I was. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, it was going good. And uh, <laughs> as a lead, uh, um, uh, the first show I got, well, I, I, I've been in different shows. Uh, I started with uh, uh, the Nutcracker and the Four Realms. That was my the, the first one I I worked in, and then it was uh, Doolittle, and then Shazam. Uh, after that, I think uh, it was Noel, so Disney Plus movie. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, and after that, I, I uh, well, curious thing, while being in the department, we needed somebody to to teach the newcomers. Okay. So I, I had this experience as an instructor from Mexico for almost uh, ten years. And uh, I got offered the, yeah, this opportunity to develop a, a program for the newcomers so we can teach them stuff about pipeline and how the company works and um, how to connect stuff like within the company. And yeah, I did that for, for a while. I trained like over 40 artists and it was great because I was learning even more. Because the thing is, you learn with uh, somebody else's mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> much better. And you learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so the first show that I got as a lead was uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Because mm -hmm. it's almost, almost here. And, but, uh, so I, I was working on this show and it was, I was teaching at the same time. So I had very little time, and on top of that, uh, it was needed. We need we needed to finish the show. We need to tackle the show, and it was nine seventeen. So I say, okay, it's a it's a small show from the tech kind of point of view, but we needed to to do it like very good, very well, because mm -hmm. everything was gonna be on camera. We didn't have any any uh, way to hide like seams or like you know tricks that if you have motion blur you can you can hide stuff there yeah, if there's cool. a shadow you can hide stuff there <laughs> no everything was happening on camera and we had these transitions without that much motion blur and it, it was gonna be a little bit hard uh, so uh, i did 1917 we finished 1917 and i just kept working on godzilla uh, versus kong I have a new, I have new show movies now. actually, and seventeen and Godzilla yeah. and Kong, like <laughs> same thing, like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the cool thing. I've I've had um, uh, 
different kind of projects. I mean, I had the superhero project. Shazam was, I mean, it was, it was it's not the superhero, but it's a superhero. So, okay, I was like, okay, enough. I, I, I have my, my share of superheroes and that's, that's good. <laughs> um, uh, animals movie, I had too little. Uh, Christmas movie, I had Noel and Nutcracker. Um, so I was like, okay, I had big monsters and then war movies. So I, I've had like very different shows and it's it's been great. But uh, <clears throat> if you remember my goal at the very beginning was to work on feature animation and had this character animation project. I'm not able to say what project I'm on at the moment, but it's it's about character animation. Oh. And I'm really happy with this project. It's, I think it's going to be I, I'm loving it. And I, have, yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's going to be a great movie, but I think uh, we're enjoying working on this project. Oh, so oh. I bet to know about this. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> if you reach your goal, it's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that was that. That was the, the whole path. That's a story. That's a, the, the story is amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a lot of things happening on the side so mm -hmm. to make it more interesting. <laughs> Obviously, there is more that can come. It always comes like to mix and shuffle things while you're doing them. So it's yeah, it's never linear. Yeah. Yes, becoming a parent and having to deal with uh, the different country because I've been yeah. Seems uh, Canada and the US have a lot of. Uh, similarity but no it's like like a totally different country and being in in uh, uh quebec is it's also like a a different country on its own so yeah that's been fun <laughs> no. well i wish to know because uh, uh i'm curious about how did you get how do you feel about being a leader artist uh, in all those films because you said like you're working on very different uh, uh, kind of film and it's to me it's quite hard to be like to think to be a leader if I'm doing animal film while doing uh, uh, war, uh, war film and stuff like that. Oh. Superheroes, yeah. <laughs> well, um... At the very beginning of the show, you have this this period where you're able to understand what the film's coming from and what's the um, how the uh, VFX supervisor or the director want to do stuff and what uh, what's expected from the department to to do for that show. So you have like a little transition period where you can like set yourself for the show and. Um, I mean, technically, it's it's the same work. It's it's just a, a matter of how you're gonna do it now with for this particular show. And um, I mean, working uh, work uh, having worked as an artist as an, as a key artist uh, taught me how to uh, how to split tasks and how to separate the. Uh, yeah, different tasks between different artists and how to how to work in parallel or how, how to connect different tasks in the chain. So you you can already like foresee what problem you're gonna have mm -hmm. before becoming a problem. <laughs> so um, that the first time I uh, I got a show, I, I was super nervous again. Because like I've never been a lead, I, I don't know how to What's expected of me? Am I supposed to like bring new ideas to the show? Am I supposed to just just uh, watch that, uh, and uh, and and do whatever they they tell me to do? I didn't know. Uh, now with experience, it's it's a little bit easier. I mean, for this show, I I really wanted to be in this show, and I I think I asked my head of department for at least three months. I was like, do we have the show? Do we have the show? Who's going to make the show? Do we have the show? Well, I was still working on the, on the previous one. Okay, I really want to do this one. 
And uh, I mean, working at MPC, I, I, I could see you can you can you can see and track everybody's uh, development. So you can see how the uh, the project is doing from the animation point of view or the rigging point of view. And you can see, oh, okay, this is this is cool. This is great. This is gonna work like this. It's gonna be, uh, make my life easier when we get the shots, or not. So yeah, I mean, you, there's a time to adapt to the show. Okay. But uh, at, at the end, I would say it's um, we have similar tasks between shows. Okay. Okay. It's like if you you said. That you, you said one thing that is not really common, like that somehow you had a dream and you find a way to to get there, right? What is your dream now? That's a very good, that's a very good question. Um, I watched uh, this uh, Soul, the the Pixar film. Yeah, and it kind of felt like like that like okay because all this time i was like okay i want to do animation i want to do animation and uh since the first time uh, i was in this animation contest in mexico and then landing a job in mexico and then landing a job in the us and then now every time it's been like i, I had a lot of self self-doubt like i'm i'm uh, am i good enough mm -hmm. am i there and it happened that all the time I was already there and probably a, a little bit late, I would say. So if I wanted, for example, if I wanted to land the job as a CG artist in Mexico, probably I could have done it two years before. Mm. Or um, as a kid, for example, if I wanted to do animation, probably I could have started doing it two years before I actually started doing it. And um uh, and the, the thing that happens is you, you get to a point, for example, this lead position. Now I'm a lead. Uh, am I like enough to be a lead? And it happens that yes, I, I already I already had it. It was just self-doubt and I, I I didn't jump to it before. But what's next? I mean, I always wanted to direct my own stories or somebody else's stories, but I, I remember being in these other companies. Uh, a, a thing that I really enjoyed was just to say, okay, how we're gonna do stuff and, and design a, a workflow or a pipeline. And I really liked that. Like, uh, okay, we're gonna, we want to achieve this look. How are we gonna do it? So, okay, we're gonna have this in CG. This is gonna be in comp and we're gonna mix these things. I love that. Um, I think I'm getting, uh, as I'm getting older, I, I, I get tired, uh, easily of doing the same stuff over, over again and not just physically, but mentally yeah, yeah. it's, you want to do some stuff. Okay. You take care of it. And then I jump to another thing. Yeah. So probably in the future, I don't know, do my own stuff. I think hmm. it's going to be the goal. Do you already plan something? The started something, or it's just something that you're gonna start in the future, still to be defined? Let's say. Um, I can say I already started. Started. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you want to, uh, I don't know, do uh, do stuff that you like on your own time. Mm -hmm. But if you get distracted easily, then you will have two things to do, like yeah. different things on your own time. Yeah. So um, I, I get bored. I probably, just, I don't know if it's a good thing, but I'm constantly doing things on the side. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, I was working on, on these films, but I think it was Shazam and the, 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 the movie after that was, I think, Noel. And at the same time, I was doing, uh, I was working on a project to do, to have a motion capture character on a TV set with a moving camera. 
and interacting with real actors on the same set on real time. And we were doing it, um, I'll send you the link later because we have a demo and a video and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, sure. uh, and just figuring out what uh, hardware to use for motion capture for the body and what uh, system to use for facial motion capture and how to do uh, hands, motion capture for hands, everything at the same time and then fitting everything uh, in a real engine uh, and the camera and fitting the camera to real engine and have an output and then comp it in real time with the live action material. That was a, that was some project. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting anxious while you were getting all these things together. So like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. so is this doable? Like, yeah. how many people were behind this thing? Uh, we were, it was a team of four. <laughs> Okay, I and, thought about 20. Yeah, less. Did, did probably. <laughs> and it was like, um, like my my first short film. We do we didn't know anything. It was like, yeah, we're gonna do it. Okay. Should be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So uh, I'm working on other stuff at the same time. Uh, I've seen, uh, for example, on reels becoming a huge thing, like everywhere. And they had the potential before, but now we're we're trying to use it as much as possible as a as a real time render engine, and we're learning a lot with the tool. If you if you have the chance, yeah, dive into it. And I think it's gonna uh, we're gonna use it even more for in the film industry in the future, in in future animation. It's, it's proving to be great a great tool. Yeah, we had a, a chat previously um, where, where an artist told us like Unreal is getting much and much more used also in pre-production for visualiz visualization, virtualization, everything to yes. pre-visualize yeah, with... what's going to happen. Uh, I'm waiting for version 5 of Unreal. I yeah. mean, from the demo, it's like... Can it really hold that much geometry in real time? All together, I, yeah. <laughs> I want to see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just imagining that you don't have to do all these different level of details uh, models. That's a huge uh, saving in time and, and resources. So you can you probably you can go from ZBrush to uh, uh, marry for textures and displacement maps and have everything fit, fit uh, into Unreal Engine. It's it's huge. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we better see it working first. Uh, sometimes the demos look really cool, but Crazy. probably yeah. are not there yet. And uh, of course, they're gonna show what they can do and yeah. not show what they Can't cannot do. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, Tools getting better. Now we have this virtual production sets like all over the world. Uh, probably it's gonna become a standard at some point. And then, I don't know, maybe like the far future, uh, some people are gonna say, like for example, Star Wars, Star Wars movies. So we had this practical effects uh, on set and we had this Muppets and actors reacting to Muppets and. It was cool, and then we went to CG, and it was like, eh, probably it's not that cool. But then CG became better, and like, okay, it's cool. And then, okay, let's go back to uh, practical effects because mm -hmm. it looks better yeah. for some reason. So probably with virtual production sets, it's going to be the same. We're going to get to a point where the uh, virtual production sets are the norm, and it looks great. And so uh, probably at some point, it's going to get even better. And then it's going to be like, uh, but probably we should go back to practical sets and because it looks better. So I don't know. That's, that's, that's what I think is going to happen um, at some point. And uh, yeah, it always happens with all these techniques and technologies. We go, it gets better, and then maybe not, not anymore. Yeah. They, they have the time and then you know, like everything goes down something yes, next but the tool is going to be there i mean now it's easier as you say for previous and layouts it's going to be it's going to be faster 
Um, I think uh, next year, maybe, yeah, or well, probably this year, we're gonna we're gonna have the first feature animation, uh, uh, the first feature done, everything in Unreal. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be the first, and mm. we'll see how well that looks. Um, I mean, it's just gonna get faster. Some people are even afraid that uh, losing their jobs. Now with AI and um, yeah. everything getting uh, faster, you can get a model of everything pretty much anytime you want. You don't have to spend that much time doing something that was already done. Uh, but I think it's it's just uh, like opening new doors to things that we haven't done before. We haven't been that creative before. If AI or Unreal can take care of that part, probably we're going to have more time to do other creative uh, stuff for, for, for projects. Um, I, I don't think the human side of, uh, of the projects is going to be lost. We're, we're, we're yeah. still going to be needed to, to do all this stuff. But you really think that uh, if I'm going to start in the film industry, should I also focus on learning Unreal as a tool in my shelf or... Yeah, I'd say it helps, and I uh, say it's gonna help. Depends. Uh, if you want to learn a job in the industry, first of all, it's gonna be a good idea to specialize in something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to be that you just know that one thing, but if you can be really good at that and have knowledge of everything else, that helps a lot. Uh, let's say if you you. Uh, want to focus on animation that's great but it's going to be even better if you know a little bit of rigging and a little bit of uh, modeling so you yeah. can understand where things are coming from how things are deforming for you to do your your animation job and where things go from there that's that's great um it's really hard to say uh, at some point if uh, a tool is going to be needed in the future I would say it's more about the skill. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for example, Houdini. It, Houdini is 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 is, is proving that uh, it's a great tool for effects, and I think it's gonna get even better for grooming and for simulation. Probably not so much uh, at uh, animation per se, but uh, it's it's a good tool to have under your belt. Just don't get married with the with the tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, at, at this point, everything helps. Everything yeah, yeah helps. It's, that's true. I, I've seen that. Um, I don't know how this relates to tech anime eventually, but uh, I've seen that with Udini, for example, there is the possibility to create procedural animations, uh, kind of animations that repeat and says all react depending on different parameters, and again. Fit where with which is fitted is that something that you use when working like in tech and with other artists you work with or you by yourself i don't know um learning houdini i'm still learning mm -hmm. i want to dive i mean go deeper into the tool uh it's, it might become the norm in the in the in the future i don't know uh, how far in the future is going to become like the software to do this? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's more about the concepts and the the the, the way we uh, think about things. It's the same. It doesn't matter the software is is it Maya, is it Houdini. It's it's always the same steps and the same concepts you're going to yeah. use like throughout the the the, the job. Um, I need to learn more Houdini. I know, I know that for sure. And uh, in the specific for Tech Anim, uh, I mean, you can do good cloud simulation. Uh, the solvers are really good in Houdini. First simulation, same. FX, it's it's different department, but it, it, it's gonna be great to have this interaction with what we do in Tech Anim and what uh, FX uh, team is doing mm -hmm. within the same software. I think that's gonna be helpful. And crowds. Oh, yeah. uh, just having a, a yeah a better way to simulate crowds, I think that's gonna come from Houdini. 
And if I would like to become like a tech anim specifically, tech anim artist, what suggestion would you give me? Like I know, and I, I know a bit of animation. I know a bit of three D. Let's say I know a little bit of a lot of departments, but really the basis. What would you suggest me to do? Okay, uh, I would say I would say for the for um, let's say you want to land your first job and it's gonna be tech anim, and yeah. you want to show your best work. Um, First of all, we're going to be looking for cloud simulation for a simulation. That's pretty much it. So what I've seen is in some demo reels, uh, some people do a tutorial that they saw, they mimic the tutorial and they show the result. So we see demos with the exact same thing, thing the exact same tutorial. We know where this is coming from, but it's not showing me if you know how to do stuff on your own. I mean, it's cool to do the tutorial. You're gonna learn a lot. That's that's for for sure. And uh, at some point, uh, we have a test or we ask uh, to to the artist to do something, so we can see if they understand or they have this. Uh, yeah, if they're understanding how CFX works, and uh, yeah, but try to do things on your own, like your own material, your own stuff. You're probably going to learn even more from there. Uh, if you do something with your friends because you're not a very good animator, that's great because you're going to you gonna have a better sense of how how, uh, how you work with different departments. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, your friend is doing animation. He's, uh, you're going to have a, a great animation, but you need to do some cloud simulation. And the animation is super fast and, and crazy. You're going to have more problems to solve with that kind of animation than with the tutorial. The tutorial is, gonna, is probably made to work yeah. and probably show that uh, it's simple. You do this, 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 and it works. Mm -hmm. But once you have that experience, like a real experience on a real project, then you're going to learn a lot. You can show uh, uh, better results, something that we can, we can actually, it's going it's to stand out from other demo reels that have the same tutorial for yeah. sure. Nice. Thank you. Uh, I wish I had a little more knowledge about tech animation like six or seven months ago because it seems like uh, to be literally in the middle between uh, a technical artist and uh, an artist. It is. Because you yeah. have the opportunity to uh, do some uh, animation but while feeling a little bit like a, really a technical artist. Yeah, probably, probably this part is going to be cut off the video, but I'm going to tell you. Um, okay, wait a second. Uh, I take the time of this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, is there, the an hour, time. one minute and... <laughs> one, hour, oh. one hour, one minute and eight seconds. Okay. So, uh, yes, you, you, you better have both parts. The technical part helps a lot. Uh, and the show right now, uh, I think the struggle is going to be from the artistic point of view, because yes, you, you, you better have some sense of animation, but you don't have to be an animator and the show right now needs to the animation, like, uh, um, a feeling because we're going to have to the, we're supposed to have to the characters, but everything is CG. So the, the tech anime artists have have to have even like like a very good technical uh, very good technical skills but at the same time like really high artistic uh, uh, sensitivity mm -hmm. and we've been having uh, a lot of uh, material so the tech artists can have are a little bit closer to animation. Sometimes it's just a matter of technical stuff. You just have to do first simulation, just have to do cloud simulation. And it's it's very technical and it's all like, okay, let's let's uh, have more damp, let's have more stretch, stretchiness, things like that. Mm -hmm. But that you can teach and you can see the results. If you move this attribute, then you're gonna get, uh, it's gonna be a little bit springy, it's gonna be more stiff. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the idea. 
if but artistically it's it's not just like that you have to know where the characters are coming from why it's supposed to look like that mm-hmm. why it's supposed to stretch even more yeah. because it's 2d animation it's not supposed to be real that's 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 a, a, a already a challenge on itself but yeah you very have um a very good uh, sensitivity for uh, animation at least the knowledge of the principles that helps a lot uh balance equilibrium and at the same time from the technical part a uh, very good understanding of physics how gravity reacts uh, friction uh, yeah everything we need for class simulation is pretty much that um if you can have a very technical understanding of how the solver of your preference works that helps a lot too even if it's uh, maya or houdini or whatever the software yes you, you better have uh, like a very good sense of both and also rigging it helps if you know some rigging yeah. and it helps a lot if you know some coding too mm-hmm. and it's so um, uh, oh. just wait a second in case we have to cut the media, media yeah, pause and okay. then we can start again What what is the um, difference so between like tech anim and CFX? Because like I had the chance to talk with the CFX artist, which told me about clothes and you know grooming uh, for characters or other things. Uh, what, what, if there is a main difference, what what is it? Uh, depends on the studio. Uh, okay. Some studios say tech anim, some say character effects. Some have the, the CFX department, CFX slash the kind of department, but the artist is a character TV. Depends on the studio, depends on what you're going to do. Sometimes mm-hmm. um, character effects is um, cloud simulation, groom, and first simulation. Sometimes it's just, uh, let's say for an animated uh, series, it's just skin fixes, mm-hmm. just uh, uh, intersections, fixing intersections adding deformations when the character, let's say, move its its arm up. Then as a, a tier I, artist, you have a rig effects that bolsters the shoulder, does something else, uh, else with the geometry. Um, at least uh, I can say from uh, my experience at MPC Film, it's about uh, cloud simulation, okay. uh, cloud, uh, cloud rig, uh, first setup, first simulation, and skin fixes. Groom is a different department, mm-hmm. and yeah, once Groom is done, uh, done with the grooming of the character, they they take care of how the character is going to look with all this beautiful fur, and then we take care of the simulation how that fur is going to move and feel. But yeah, it depends on the studio. Mm-hmm. But okay. uh, I would say it's pretty much the same thing. CFX, the canon, it's it's. Uh, Probably some little differences between between the studios. Okay, good to know. And um, I was thinking about the fact that you said uh, at the beginning of this chat together that uh, as a lead, you already know where the problem are going to be, dividing the uh, in smaller task your project. How can I, as a junior, show you that I'm able to do the task that you gave me? Like, okay, uh, you have a big project uh, and then you have just unpacked it in small different uh, tasks. As a junior, I should uh, and I do, I need to, to be able to complete a, a certain task. How do you know that a certain junior is going to be able to do that kind of task? Uh, well, uh, as a newcomer, as a junior, yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't really know if you can. That's why we have, you're gonna have this uh, probation period to yeah. to prove that you can actually do the job. Um, as a junior, the first thing you have to, well, you're supposed to come with certain skills of the of the position. So we are assuming that you already know how to do cloud simulation that uh, you know at least uh, the terms uh, mm-hmm. that we use in, in, in uh, for the job. 
And of course, you know anything about the pipeline. So that's going to be the first thing that you have to learn how the pipeline works in, in the studio and how you're, you're going to connect your stuff into the pipeline and make it work. So of, of course, it's expected that you don't know everything. And at the very beginning, we're not going to give like a, like a very um, complex taxes, uh, tasks, sorry. Um, so of course, I mean, there's, there's certain understanding that uh, you have to learn and you have to build from there. But I'd say um, if you're starting a position, whatever the position is, take notes of everything. Because probably uh, I've seen it on myself. I start giving instructions that, okay, you're going to do this and then you're going to connect this, 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 this. Yeah. And I give 10 different uh, instructions and then I go, okay. And after that, you're going to do, and then I have uh, 20 other things to do. So you're going to get lost. And of course, a, a, a more uh, senior artist, they're more experienced and they already have all these uh, uh, tasks in their head. They already know how to do it. It's sometimes it's like obvious, like, oh, come on, you just have to do two plane ships and a, a wrap. And of course, <laughs> it's, it's not, uh, for somebody that's starting, it's not as, uh, as simple as that. So yeah, if you're starting to take notes, because um, the rhythm is, uh, the speed is, is pretty fast in the studio. Uh, you're gonna, you have to do all these tasks in, uh, in within your eight hours a day. And if you forget to do one of them, probably lighting is not gonna get your your uh, result. And you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to show your work, so it's not gonna be reviewed. So it's not going to lighting. So lighting is not going to have a render next thing morning. So every step of uh, of uh, of the process is important. Uh, so yeah, take notes so you don't forget what to do. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Always ready, Tina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you better. <laughs> you have questions? Yeah, I have so many questions about <laughs> your role and your next project, but probably it's not the time to ask say. those kind of questions, obviously. And there is uh, just one last question by my son, and uh, it's more about uh, what do you really think that as a junior I should do? Because this industry is quite competitive and I have to impress you with my job. It, there is something that I can do to let you think, okay, this is the right one. Um, it's a good question. Uh, okay, uh, demo reels are gonna get you an interview. Interview is gonna get you a job. So the first thing you need is uh, have a good reel. And by having it real, a good reel, as I said, don't just do the same tutorials that everything is doing, everybody's doing. Try to show something different. It's going to stand out. Probably it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same concept. It's just you're doing it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, mix ammo motion capture animations with uh, uh, a dancer with a huge dress. We've seen a lot of those which is not bad. It shows that you can do cloud simulation, but it's not going to stand out. So what else can you do? So probably a superhero with a cape. Okay, that's going to show us that you can do capes and cloud simulation. It's the same thing, but it's showing something different. Um, what else? Uh, I would say try to connect with people that are already working in the industry. Mm -hmm. We have now we have LinkedIn, we have pages on Facebook. There's a way to, to communicate with these people and uh, try to understand what the process, if, if you have in mind a studio, try to understand what the process in the studio is and what's expected from you as an artist. Because at some point, if you get an interview, you're going to get those questions asked like, okay, how did you do this? And okay, 
I did it this way, this way, this way. And it shows that you understand the job. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, that's it. Another thing is, I don't know how to um, prepare people for this, but you have to you have to understand that your job or your work is going to be shown every day and it's going to be critiqued every day, probably twice a day. <laughs> and I'm sure uh, uh, as a newcomer, as a starter, you're going to get a lot of re rejection. It's going to be wrong a lot of times. And you have to make sure that it's, it's not personal. It's a critique on the work you're doing for the shot you got like in specific, it's not, we're not critiquing you as an artist, we're just crit critiquing the, the, the task. And I've seen a lot of newcomers, a lot of young people, they really get, uh, I don't know if depressed, but at least sad. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard because you're gonna do that every day of your life doing this job. You're gonna get critiqued, and of course they're not gonna use bad language, and they're gonna say, "Oh, you suck." Of course, no, that's not gonna happen. But uh, he's gonna say, "You know what? This is wrong. This is not working. Um, I needed more of this instead of that. It's moving too much." Um, yeah, just be prepared for that. Um, what else? Oh, I, I, uh, I think I forgot. If you're uh, in your demo reel, if you're showing cloud simulation, for example, or first simulation, or uh, first simulation with wind, ha try to have a reference on the site so you can show that you can uh, yeah, uh, okay. get the same result as the real thing. Because if you, for example, you show, a, I don't know, a, a giant spider with antennas because nobody has seen that before so we don't know how that's supposed to move but we've seen a lot of dresses and and clothing and if you can actually have one side by side you can you can show that you can do the real thing that's going to help especially if you're doing if you want to get into a um, pfx studio because we do a lot of um uh, digital doubles for example mm -hmm. oh, yeah yeah <laughs> okay do, uh, sorry, do it now. You do it. You do it. <laughs> Thank you for this call. It Thank was you. a pleasure to have you here, and you gave us so many tips and tricks. And I'm quite sure the juniors are going to uh, learn a lot through your words. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for the invitation. It, it was it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Omar. Bye. Bye. If you have any other question, um, yeah, I'll let you know as soon as I can say more about the projects. Okay. But yeah, we're in contact on LinkedIn. And yeah, we'll talk later. Okay. okay. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Cool. Bye. 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 Have a nice day. Night. Good night. night.